All right, ladies and gents, welcome to another episode, potentially, of Low Elo Legends. Starting off the game in the red, we have Goths for Yala y y him. Um, and he's starting off with his houses. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. No urgency with the scout because multitasking is not so easy to do. In the blue, we have uh, Aglot, and he's playing as the Cummins. And what I'm really excited about here, I, I want to see if he'll go for a second town center in the feudal age with Cummins. I also want to see if the red player goes for a lot of militia. I'm casting this live on my uh, Twitch stream, and I'm going to aim to do Low Elo Legends every Tuesday. And I'm actually okay with doing Low Elo Legends on weekends as well, but that's only when there's not tournaments. And there's been a lot of events over the past few months, so maybe like once a month we'll do it on a weekend. And then Tuesdays are a good day. Straggler trees! Oh boy! Okay, so still, it's going to take me time because I'm really bad with edited content. Because it's so time consuming. But I am eventually going to get the Straggler Tree video up on YouTube. And I'm just going to break down how these are your flexibility trees. So it's not a bad idea if you're scouting to use the Straggler Tree at the start. But I hope that he does save these for later and I can explain. And he doesn't chop them instead of building a lumber camp. At this map, you get a lot of water buffaloes. That's 150 food each, unlike a sheep or a goat that just has 100. Then you get two rhinos, which are like boars, except they have more food and they attack faster. And then you also have a lot of fish out here. Um, so what you should be doing is building a, a lumber camp. I thought that was a house, and I was really hoping that was a house so he could house wall between the wood lines. But instead, I think he wants his lumber camp to be part of that future wall. So... The chopping's not going to be very efficient. Because after he chops through this tree, there's a large gap in between the lumber camp and the wood line. But he's, he's at least building a lumber camp. And I hope that he uses wood to make fishing ships. Ah, wow, red seems to be... This is, this is a good lumber camp. See how he can have villagers on either side taking trees? After he chops a tree or two, he's still going to be right next to that wood line. That's a good one. Uh, goths also do more damage against rhinos and boars. Uh, their villagers do, so I'm curious if he knows that. If you know it and you work with it, it can be good. Otherwise, what that can lead to is killing the rhino or the boar way out here in front of the TC if you're used to regular sieve. So I don't know if he's, um, oh, these houses, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's very cluttered in here. This is a bit like my, my room at the moment. I need to clean my room this afternoon, so, yeah, just, just cluttered. Like, put that in the closet, you know, get, get this out of here. Do your laundry. Maybe build the houses in front of your base or out here. I think sometimes low elo players really... And it might be the resolution they're playing on. Like, they're they're not thinking about everything else out here. They're just thinking about what's on their screen. So, uh, what I would have suggested here is build the lumber camp here, because you see how far his villagers are walking now. So that's just because of a bad lumber camp. Build the lumber camp here or here, and then build the houses like this. There he goes, attacking the rhino! Wow, I thought she was going to die. And uh, Red has... Oh, well done. Okay, now Red's building a mill. You don't get berries on this, but he's building a mill next to the deer. Uh, for the most part, I really like it. Uh, these are things that you should try and avoid, because again, that's inefficient, but... So far, pretty good game. What's Blue doing with the scout? Oh, he's auto-scouting! Let's go! You can always tell it's auto-scout, because auto-scout will go to the corner of the map. We're not using control groups, we're not trying to go from our TC back to our scout. Pressing 1 twice, or and then pressing H to go back to the TC, or whatever the hotkey is. Instead, we're just auto-scouting and letting the game do it for us. Alright, what's red scouting look like? I think this is also auto-scouting. I think he's gonna scout the south. So I'm so torn on uh, the auto-scout thing. Because, on one hand... Yes, this game's very complicated. Yes, it's not easy. However, if you're just opting to use auto-scout, I don't think you're ever going to get used to scouting normally, right? 
So it, it eases lower levels into the game more, but it also gives them a kind of a way out, so to speak. I mean, it definitely isn't, it's not like it's the most OP scout ever. But I'm still very torn on it, and oof, man, if he wasn't Goths, that villager would have died. Yeah, Daemonizer, I think what you should... So Daemonizer says he uses it after finding the starting resources. What, what I would suggest is use it when you've already found your enemy, you know what your enemy's gonna do, and rip, villager's dead. Uh, but you really need to use your scout to see what's going on. Like, if, if Red were to scout and see that blue is docked, you know, he could maybe adapt a strategy around that, but you know, I, I do understand that might be a little bit... Might be getting ahead of ourselves here. You put it into auto... So most of... How many people with the show of ones put it into auto scout immediately after finding their starting resources? Before finding the enemy. Uh, okay. Alright, I mean, there's a decent amount, but... Just curious. Oh, look, he just auto-scouted underneath the TC! <laughs> oh! Auto-scout! Oh, man, just passing! Uh, Red is on the way to Feudal Age. He has not docked, so he is behind, big time. Up here, I think he had more idle TC time, and Blue added four fishing ships. So I always say if you have the dock potential to do it. Um... Blue, I, I don't know what Blue's plan is in the next stage. Remember, Kumans can build a second TC in Feudal. So I'm thinking he might do that. Uh, man, so many of his villagers walked the gold back to the TC instead of the mining camp. I see Blue's made a barrack. Or, sorry, I don't know colors, apparently. Red is made a barracks, and he is Goths. Now, what's the discount in Dark Age, guys? 20% on Goths? Or is it, uh, yeah, I think it's it's 20% in Dark Age, and it's 25% in Feudal Age. So it actually might make a little bit more sense. Okay, he's only made three. This is fine. But just make the next ones in the Feudal Age. So you have a nice little early punch, and then you can make more. All right. All right, red is in Feudal. First thing you should be doing... Double bit axe upgrade. Get that wood upgrade. Okay, blue built a lot of dark age farms. Which means they will expire. Okay, and he is pop capped. He needs a house, and he's going to place the houses over here. See these this is better. I like these houses more. Now we could have used these houses over in this area and already have a full wall. He's also making fishing ships, something I really like. Uh, what? 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 They have gold in their hand. Wait a second. He wants to TC there. Oh my god. So he wants. He knows his Civ. I'll give him props. He knows his civilization. But he walked to the most unimportant area of the map ever. I think it's a safety thing. I think he feels more secure down there. What's funny is he went to an area that Auto Scout didn't even scout. It's not like he went to this corner, which was scouted. He went to the other corner, and there's no gold or stone down here. Okay. He, yeah, Dave, Dave says he didn't even see the wood line down here. Yeah, exactly. So he this is kind of a farm TC. <laughs> Alright, he is getting double bit axe. Red got double bit axe and horse collar, and red is um He's getting man at arms now. Okay. Now guys, I think I'm not saying red's gonna win this game, but in terms of the, the small things like lumber camp placement, lumber camp timing, uh mining camp placement, I think red is is more experienced in that area. He does have way too much on gold to make the man at arms he's going for. Uh, but he, he might not know that, but the mining camp's good, whereas Blue's mining camp is a Tetris mining camp, and you see this villager, and how far he has to walk. Now, there's only two villagers on that gold, but if you had, like, eight, they'd be bumping all over the place. So, try and keep a one-tile gap between your mines and your mining camps. 
Now we have a barracks here for Blue. So uh, honestly, Blue's doing a great job keeping his builds producing, and he also fished on a fish map. So, well, we'll see what he can do. Red, has he found Blue? Nope, he's auto scouting. So he still has not found the enemy yet. Yo, what if auto scout finds the base? Oh, oh yeah, go to the corner, auto scout. Go to the yo, auto scout is MVP. Oh my god! I wonder if Red, Red's got to be so confused. What if he's never heard of Cummins before? What if he didn't know about the second TC in feudal? Oh god, please don't. Wait a second, he's changing direction. Oh, this is amazing! He's gonna go after the sneak base because it's the only thing he scouted. He hasn't even gone to the main base of blue at all. He doesn't know about it yet. Auto Scout will figure it out soon, okay? Hey, sir. Castle Age is coming in for blue. Which town center is doing that? Oh, it's this town center doing it! There's no way that Man at Arms can destroy that, right? I guess it depends on if Blue reacts. He did? Did he ring the bell? I think he rang the bell. So he's noticed the auto scout. The auto scout's still scouting, and here's Blue's point of view. Oh, he rang the bell again. Okay, so he knows about the bell hotkey. Now this whole eco is going idle. You should avoid ringing the bell. That's really hard to see. You just garrison Bills in the TC you need to. But, uh, hey, the guy is gonna kill the man-at-arms. And he will keep his TCs up. So he's, he has the lead. Now, Red, um, he's building a blacksmith. He actually will need one other building. He needs a blacksmith market or blacksmith archer range or stable. Because you need two feudal age buildings to be able to get the castle age. Uh, he's probably... Okay. All right, so I, now I don't like how he's built his blacksmith and his stable right up against the mines to make things inefficient, but he realizes he needs the buildings and he's going to go up. And now he knows there's two bases. T90 rigged, T90 rigged, T90 oh, boy. rigged, T90 rigged. Okay, here comes the auto scout. Blue seemed to, seemed to react really quickly. Blue doesn't have loom, though. Oh, don't ring the bell because of an auto scout. T90, T90, T90. No, just... Guys, best thing I suggest for you if you're a bell ringer is just learn the garrison hockey. For me, it's G. So I'd select these two bills, press G, click the TC, and they go in. And then I think W for me is go back to work inside the TC. I think I have the classic hotkeys for that. Makes such a difference, trust me. I forgot I wanted to add a bell emote for low elo legends. Okay, so blue, uh, his fishing ships are getting more inefficient. I would suggest uh, redocking. That way, the fishing ships don't have to travel so far to drop off food. He doesn't have loom. Red, attack this one, dude. Attack this one. Uh, this one. This one. This one. This one. Well, how can you argue with these results? How can you say, T90, that the bell is bad when Blue has all of his kills because of the bell? If it works, it just works. Okay. But it's whatever. It's goth infantry. You can just toss those things away. He doesn't care. And another barracks. I like how both players are playing to their Civ strengths. I like that. Seven kills and one death for blue. And then zero kills and seven deaths for red. Does that mean blue lost a villager to a wolf somewhere? Or a bear or a jaguar or a tiger or a llama? I don't know. How many people think we're going to see a castle drop? I see stone income for red right now, and he's getting stone mining. Oh, the boar at the start, obviously. I forgot. Yeah, or the or the rhino. Um, but I think he's going to try and drop a castle. I really wonder how... And I haven't talked about this much yet. I wonder how they're going to deal with the gold in the middle. I saw blue made a single step lancer. Where did that go? Oh! Oh, he's going to raid with it. Pokey poke poke. Oh, the micro too. Okay, so he killed a vill. I really wish view lock worked so I could I could watch their view lock. Let's see. Building a farm. Building another farm. 
Oh, now he- dude, he's micing really well. This is really good- for this elo, this is really good unit control. Uh, the tiger there, and red's just attacking with villagers. Okay, now he's running around. Now he's actually not micing the scout, I think that's auto-scout. So he's just trying to find areas to hit. Step Lancers are a great raiding unit. Red, get your longsword over here, dude. Okay. And the auto sky the auto scout's just chilling here. That's great. Yep, just run all around. Alright, so that was a little bit of U lock there. Uh 48 eco versus 37. Uh blue's also on stone, so he's thinking about building a castle. The auto scout's still running all around, and uh blue is in the lead right now. Definitely. He's creating out of both of his TCs. He has some real T90 farms. D does this stable double as a mill? Did I not hear about this? Because he's treating the stable in the barracks like a mill. Starting to farm around it. I really hope he farms on the other side here and builds a mill. I guess he can't fit it in between the stable and the barracks. Okay. Okay, he's queued up a bunch of step lancers. Nice. I, I love his eco upgrades. Like Greg didn't get um, the wood upgrade. He's making some fire galleys now. Like blue definitely has played his sieve and played the map well. And for 800 elo, this is pretty impressive. I feel like 800 elo now is way better than 800 elo when we started this series. Like Red's now going to three town centers, so he's going to start catching up with the eco. Uh, really wants a castle, I'm sure, and I'm sure most of you guys know that goths are really hard to stop if they get to late game. So, even if they fall behind early... Does anyone know if Kumans get champion? I know they don't get hand cannon. It could actually be really difficult for Kumans to fight champion Huskarl and Halberdier. Alright, update on the farms. Okay, he's building a mill here. I, I get it. I'm not really the person to to talk about farms. However, if you really look at it, that is probably the worst mill he could build. Whereas if you build the mill here, you can farm more on this side. Okay, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. He should pick Khmer next time. <laughs> oh, they do get champions. Okay. Oh my god! Blue's building a castle in the middle with two villagers! Three villagers. And Red doesn't... Red doesn't know about that. He just cleared out a fire galley, but I think Red is very... He, he's scared, I think. Every time he goes to Blue's base, there's a bell. Wow, we have another forward TC from Blue. He's spreading around the map, taking map control. But yeah, I think he's really scared to leave his base, so I don't think he'll deny that. Really appreciate all the effort you put into entertaining us. Okay. from Spain. Hola, amigo. Paver, thank you for the five dollars. Look at look at Blue's sneakiness. I love it. I love his sneaky play. I. I like, it could easily look really dumb. So there's Auto Scout. Auto Scout found the castle. But it could look silly to do this, but um, at least here there's some stone. And if he loses one area, then he has the other, I guess. That's his logic. He's sneaking in with the speedy step lancers. We have a little bit of range, as you saw before. And oh, wow. Uh, Red actually wanted to build houses there, so this is awkward. Uh, garrison? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so blue did damage. He's running back. This is honestly how you should use Step Lancers. This is exactly how you should use Step Lancers. As a raiding unit, and then probably... I mean, you can make arguments for... for uh, against archers in some situations, but... With the speed of them, that's the way to go. Alright, and now Red is, is spent time chasing this, and meanwhile, Blue's taking the whole map. He's getting murder holes! Okay, so in case Red tries to attack that castle, there will be no minimum range. Also, think Step Lancers are better than Longswords. Blue is, uh, you've got to make, like, Pike and Longsword. Yeah. Blue is winning this one. 
with 68 eco, 69 eco now, and then 57 for red. But can he win the game? He has the gold. I see him getting quite a few upgrades right now. Step husbandry. Which one is that? Does that... Can you guys remind me, does that increase the production of the uh, step lancers? I, I thought that increased the production of cav archers too. How, how many units does that apply to? Production speed of... Obviously it's the step lancers. Does that also apply to their... That doesn't apply to their paladins too, right? I feel like I haven't been on Twitch for a year or so, but it is obvious who's always getting a sub immediately. Smile. Steps, Light Cav, and Kip Check. Okay, I thought it applied to Cav Archers. I thought, isn't it 80% faster, which is really OP by the way. Holy house walls. Oh my god. Blue is a late game machine. He wants to take all the map. Red can't see it! Red actually can't see it. Now he's on his way to the Imperial Age. He is Goths. He has two castles up, but Red doesn't have Town Watch, so he can't see that there is a castle going up there. Hey, sir. Meanwhile, Blue is sending a bunch of steps in here. He's also on the way to the Imperial Age. Excuse me. Uh, plenty of gold around the map for him. And, oh boy, Red is building a town center here. I'm just wondering if he can accidentally spot this. Nope, I don't think so. That castle goes up, it will do so much damage. Anarchy's on the way, and chain mail armor for Yevalas. Uh, that means he can produce Huskarls from barracks. Here comes Blue with the steps. Probably shouldn't be fighting underneath castle fire, and there's two castles in here. He, of course, doesn't know that, so he wants to hit from this side and then have the castles from the other. But yeah, longswords is so bad. Such a bad unit. You really, like, goths need to flood, and they need to be aggressive. Defensive? That's, that's not how goths can play. Okay, Red can see the castle now, but it's too late. He hasn't reacted to it because he's dealing with the step lancers. Blue's castle will go up. He has crazy eco numbers, crazy upgrades, and uh, I wonder what Red's reaction to this is going to be. Well, he hasn't noticed yet. Oh, okay. He may he's making trips. I would suggest sending villagers away from here, though, Red. Instead of just sitting here. Another castle from blue. Okay, so I think this one's a little bit unnecessary. <laughs> but the first one did a lot of damage, so... Alright, alright. Red, make pikemen, dude. Make pikemen. Yo, this is the castle wall! This is the castle wall! This is what I, I uploaded to YouTube last week. It's the castle wall strategy. Well, I mean, the thing is, blue... In order to keep these castles up, he has to take out that trap. And if he needs to take out that trap, he needs to fight underneath castles. And Red's going to protect the trebuchets. So the reason I don't like this second castle is because you could lose two then. Instead, you could have built that next castle in the middle or maybe on the right side. I like how he left a gap between the houses as well. So now Blue's thinking, well, shoot, I've got to deal with this. He's getting elite step lancer. Let's see how elite step lancers do. Should do pretty well against just regular Huskarls. But then you have the Castle Fire. And Long Swords. He just wants to take out the Trebuchets. Like, we're still looking at Castle Age units for Red. With the exception of the Trebs. He doesn't have Imperial Age upgrades on any of the units. And Blue sacrificed his Step Lancers, but he keeps his Castle up. And now Red will need to make another Trebuchet. But like, there is a risk against Goths. That they could eventually flood against you, so you've got to be very careful if you're in Blue's position. But he has- I, I've liked the economy from him. He has way more on every resource, except for stone. And he's spread out all around the map, so it'd be very difficult for Red to kill him. I mean, Blue could send in the Huskarls after the Treb. Okay. 
just blue was able to macro better. That Kumin TC, 2 TC boom in Feudal Age really helped him. I'm wondering if he's going to make more than one stable, though. He's only producing step lanterns out of one stable and sending them to the corner. And now the Huskarls come out from red. And he's going to give blue the exact same treatment. I'll say goodbye to your trebuchets, and then blue, say goodbye to your castle, too. All right. So... Goth infantry, incredibly cheap, incredibly dangerous. Blue has the resources to win this game right now, but will he be able to do it? Okay, he's building another stable in the north now. So we'll have one stable production from both sides. That is not great. I have to say that is not great. Uh, Murder Hole is doing work here against the Huskarls, though. Yeah, but that castle will go down. So that my point earlier was, first castle did enough damage. Build the next castle in a safe position in case you lose that. So he just lost over a thousand stone because of that decision. Alright, I think at this point, is Blue still making vills yet? Yeah, he might be struggling to add villagers and add military. So make more buildings. Yeah, here we go. He really wants to go Step Lancers. And guys, Goth, Halbadir, and Huskarl destroy that. The pointy boys destroy that. Huskarls, if you look here at this number, eight pierce armor. That's good against archers. They're good at raiding. They're also good against archers. They are not good against, or not great against step lancers. Pointy boys are. Can we please get some T90 boys in the chat? Thank you. They're blue in that emote, but you know, pointy boys are needed. Okay, yeah, Blue really likes the sneak attacks. He's a really annoying player to play against, I bet. Because here he comes now. And he's just going to poke the castle. And Reg also been affected by this. He's been playing defensive because of these attacks. Do you think Red's... I bet you Red is saving for Elite Huskarl right now. Yes, yeah, Strode, I feel like... That when I say that Halbs destroy Step Lancers, it's because of the cost. I just want to be clear on that. You're you're creating these units with gold. It's 70 food, 30 gold. It's not cheap. Whereas Halbs are dirt cheap. And they create instantly with perfusion. So Halbs should win that. Now what you could do with blue is you could you could T90 boys, T90 go in for the boys. kill here, right? You need to mass something and instead of just raiding, have siege with it. Did he get relics? No relics for either player. Okay, interesting. The like, Kumans don't have a lot of str strengths against Goths if Goths are fully boomed. Maybe someone just needs to make the decision. Maybe it's Red who will make a decision to leave his base, taking a risk. Please get Halberdier. Please get Halbadir. Okay, he wants to take this castle out. So blue has a force over here. Blue has a force over here as well. He has a lot of units. He's more than red does, actually. And it will probably react to this. Not love that he's about to lose that castle and try and take out the Trebs. Red's Trebs are unprotected. The Step Lancers are on the way. Man, aren't Step Lancers such a cool looking unit? Say what you want about how effective they are in games, but they look really freaking cool. And boom, Trebs down. That red is just feeling more and more hopeless. But it is the definition of insanity to continue to repeat the same thing that's not working over and over and over again. Yeah. Why not make more units? And what is that lumber camp? These guys really like to build their lumber camps between two wood lines, regardless of how much space is there. That's just, just as inefficient for each clump of wood. That's what that lumber camp is. Gotta save on wood. They only have thousands. Okay. Oh, the Step Lancers. They're fully upgraded. The Huskarls aren't. Oh, man. Now, I, I haven't seen this before, actually. Elite Huskarl versus Step Lancers. I just assumed. Yeah. Oh, man. Beautiful play from the Step Lancers. Beautiful play. But you need help. 
Red, you need Halberdier. I think blue is just... Like, if you would have uh, switched the positions, blue just seems to have played this better, right? If blue was Goths and red was making defensive step lancers, I think the Goths would, would probably be winning. Fantastic. Okay, now he's making more barracks for more production. He must like Huskarls. How many people out there either used to play like this or still do, where you just decide to go for a certain unit and strategy, and if it doesn't work, then you lose. And if it does work, you win. There's no... There's no changing of strategy in-game. That's far too complicated, right? You just say something. It's funny, I see Jabroni TV in the chat. I saw him streaming a few weeks ago, and he was Franks, and he was like, eh, I'm gonna go champions. <laughs> it was Dark Age. And I think he was against Britons. And I was just like... Oh, you're Franks. Why why uh, why would you say champion of all things? I went back like three hours later, I think you had won that game too. Okay, it's a lot of elite husk girls. I'd love to see some demos here. Alright. The husk girls are elite. So now they have ten pierce armor, they still have crappy melee armor. Only two, that's that first number. Step Lancers should do quite well here. Now, there were more Huskarls going into this than before. And so, the... Well, Red clicked the Treb for a while there instead of the units first. It ends up being fairly even. Now, Red will have reinforcements. Yeah, you can't forget that. And uh, with the High Pierce Armor, they can stay underneath the castle for a bit longer and take out these Trebs, maybe. Blue actually trebbed down the blacksmith. It's not like red was going to get upgrades anyway, so who even cares? And then, oh, wow, okay, a sneaky castle in this corner from blue. And down goes that trebuchet. 36 military against 44, so... It's... Does anyone else just have a feeling that blue could throw this with those resources? I mean, I have... I've said time and time again he seems like the more experienced player, but I do have this this feeling that it is actually possible for him to lose this year. If red produces and just surprises blue, blue has no defense on any of these bases, right? Even the castle is not really protected right now. I think blue right now is waiting to add trebs and he wants to go for a side attack to win the game, but red's production's high. This is why I said if you make the pointy boys, the halberdiers, with the huskarls, it's perfect. Alright. This is the strength of goths. They can still stay in games like this. Alright, Blue's just protecting the trebuchets here. Now you could make champion, or you could just make, with those resources, you could continuously make these step lancers. Uh, it's actually great when you have a wood line on the side, because... You have that uh, one tile range, so a lot of Red's units can't fight, while the Step Lancers can group up and fight. Correct play for Red is to fight the Step Lancers before taking out the Treb. If you kill the Step Lancers, then you can take out the Treb. Oh my god. I mean, it's still really costly losses for Red, but he's gonna take out the Treb and hold on for now. Blue is sending in. It's one stable! One stable! You have 8,000 wood! Make more stables! Uh, it's speaking, it's like... The biggest pet peeves with Low Elo Legend is how they use their wood. Either they don't produce buildings, or when they do chop trees, they want 10 tile gaps between the lumber camp and the wood line. <laughs> Like, then, uh, if I were to choose one thing that bothers me with Low Elo Legends, it's how they use their wood, alright? It's alright. You know, uh, not everyone is able to control their wood how they like. That's just life. That's what I've told all my previous ex-girlfriends, but it's fine. It's fine. You can still live life. You can still play games. I'm not trying to discourage you guys from doing your thing. Pikemen! Pikemen! Let's see how the pikes do now. Well, he's only clicked the trap, so we, we have to wait and see once the trap goes down. Boom! Take that, pointy boy. I've got my own now. Now, he needs 
600 gold for Halberdier. The blue has him com completely surrounded. It was, if, if red wins this game, did he really place a lumber camp there? With what? With what? Why is there a lumber camp there? It's actually... The lumber camp's so bad that it gives him vision over Blue's units next to the stable. <laughs> it's a... Wow, that's actually... That's not even bad. That's just legendary. That's 300 IQ right there. Okay. Red is struggling to be able to produce as well. Um, and now... Oh, but now he's getting Halberdier. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So Blue should win this game. Blue could build a wonder, for goodness sake. Oh boy, red is, I like this actually, not only is he bringing the pointy boys, but he's bringing the female farmer, she's there to uh, to boost their spirits, and he's also sending halbs this way for a bit of an attack or, or defense of some kind. Ah, blue's making kip checks now, so he saw the, the pointy boys and figured I'd make some range now, but that's, that's the problem with goths is Goths can make Huskarls against Archers. I think Red could win this. His eco is way worse, but at least he's spending his resources. Blue clicked to go after these trebuchets with his Step Lancers, and he gets one. He won't even get two. Oh my goodness. It's happening. Oh my goodness. It's happening. 10,000 food and 5,000 gold. Blue, just, he loves the sneaky raids, but he could never finish the guy off. This is a YouTube episode. 110%. This is going to the playlist on YouTube. Oh my goodness. Did he make fish traps out here, by the way? He... What? That's so far away from your dock. You can make them... Um, you know, it, it, it's fine, it's fine. Alright, so here comes Red. Uh, he's clearing up the north. He still has the lumber camp there. He's saving that wood for later. 140 pop versus 118. Okay, Red's gotta be regrouping, right? Or blue, rather. Okay, he's making kip checks. I think he, he's probably freaking out right now. He's probably freaking out. He doesn't know what to do. And truthfully, it's really hard to know what to do against Goths, which is why you need to kill early. With, uh, you know, the resources you have. Unbelievable! Okay, Red wants to do something. He just dropped off. Okay, he wants to build a TC. So I've seen Red do that a few times. Just so you guys know... If you have gold or wood in your villagers' hands and you build a farm or a mill or a lumber camp, regardless of the resource you have, you actually drop it off in your bank. You don't need to drop off gold there and then build a TC either. Once the TC's up, you get the resource. So he's making life a little bit too difficult for himself, but I used to do that all the time myself. Look at the military difference. Does that work with any building? That works with, let's say, it, the biggest one that's going to confuse people and wow people is the... It works with lumber camps, mills, and mining camps, regardless of the resource you have. So if you have 10 food and you build a mining camp, you get that 10 food when the mining camp's up. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it happens. Or if you have like 10 gold and you build a farm, or 20 wood and you build a farm, when the farm's completed, you get the resource. So so many people are dropping off wood before they build farms, for example. You don't need to do that. Alright, so now red has gold here, uh, and now blue's getting cavalier. One hour in... He's going for calves, but there's this this rock paper scissors game you have to play against goths. They have one of the best post imperial army compositions because they can kill anything. You make range, there's huskarls. You make cav, there's pointy boys. You make a counter to that, and champions they have their own champions. The only thing they really don't counter with that is a lot of gunpowder, but that's a lot of gunpowder. Okay, so I mean, red is going to go for an attack now. Oh! <laughs> Hello! I like how that little gap that blue left there earlier 
uh, which I assume he left there for his his step lancers to run through. The Trebs rolled through. And Blue just rang... Oh my god, Blue's falling apart. He's falling apart. He just rang the bell, and now you see it, guys. Every bit of his eco that was near town center is idle. Wait, now now he's evacuating. And he, he does take out the Trebs. He's making cav archers now. Okay. Is he sending the villagers to the other corner? Oh, this game's never going to end. All right. Well, cav archers with cav archers are really bad with uh, humans because they lack bracer. And again, halb huskarl is a combination that can beat it, but it's still on red to have the proper combination. I think red is having a similar issue to blue, and it's going to take him some time to finish off the game. He's going to need more barracks and forward positions. Best thing blue could do right now with this villager is let her die. So send her over to the side. If she continues to chase with the others, by the time she's dead, these will have another target to go after. What? What? All right. <clears throat> I think he had him on a control. He had those units on a control group. He really needed them over here. It's 77 bills for blue, but has he unrung the bell? Okay, I think he just did. He just has a ton of idle villagers. He has 14,000 food, but look at that pointy boys go against the kip checks. I could have sworn those were elite earlier. Maybe I clicked the step lancer. Ooh! Oh my goodness. If this game isn't low elo legends, I don't know what is. New TC. All right, one relic for red. Goodness gracious, I I, I do relate. Uh, I I can't understand that these players have issues finishing off long games. I I understand that. I think the average game for low elo players is well over an hour. No, don't sit underneath the town center. You're just giving. Well, you know what? The town center doesn't have fletching, so that might actually be decent. But you are receiving more damage from the TC now. But we saw Blue's problem. He just needed more buildings and to push earlier. And now Blue is here with Vils. I guess he really wanted gold. But Red should be okay here. Where, where did those Vils even come from? Oh, he's going to take this gold. Because this is... Yeah, Red will never see that. <laughs> Red actually doesn't see that. That's amazing. Yeah, don't take this one. Just take this one right on the end. Okay. I mean, it's not a bad idea to mine whatever gold he can. While he can. And these cav archers do spam really quickly, but they also die really quickly to Huskarls. Meanwhile, over here, Blue is losing farms to trebuchets. And he will lose that castle. I think Blue is slowly losing hope now. He's gotta be. I... I sensed it. I just sensed that Blue wasn't gonna finish off the game and that he would have a really tough time finishing it off once Red pushed out with this, this goth trio. Actually, it's it's been a duo of Huskarls and Halbs. That's it. Man... Well, I have a lot of tips I can give both these players later. Blue does seem to be almost a faster player in many ways. But when it, when the game gets late and the game gets messy, it's really hard to stabilize eco. That's one thing that much higher elos do really well. You lose 20 villagers, you create 20 more, you build new lumber camps. But Blue doesn't have... He has zero military. But don't worry... He has 15,000 food, and he just researched Hussars. <laughs> so he's waiting, and he's probably going to make... Yeah, here we go. So he's go he likes the side attacks. He's all about the side attacks, but he can't kill this right now. <clears throat> Honestly, what's the best way for Blue to win this now, Twitch chat? License guy, good to see you, and everyone else, thank you. I'm too focused on the game right now. Thank you for the resubs. No, the, the best way for Blue to win this, it might sound dumb, 
is to bring Red's military back into Red's base by raiding him. This is the way that lost him his position. The way that made him fall behind of going for the side attacks is actually the best way to win. Just just raid. And then what Red hopefully Red will overreact and send everything back. And then you can stabilize and go for a push to the middle. It's actually the best way. But he doesn't have the best units. Champions would be good here. Even some some Cavalier would be better against the Huskarls. Yeah, Red just dealt with it immediately. He experienced this once or twice before. And Red takes the score lead. Oh, no. Remember, Goths get 10 more population space in the Imperial Age, so 210 is their max. And here come these Huskarls from Red. But you see what I mean? If Blue were to attack there and then have a like, champion hand cannon... He doesn't get hand cannons, I guess. So just champions to push the middle. And then drop a castle, he could take the middle back. <clears throat> but that's... That's pretty advanced thinking, I think. Oh, boy. T-Dunk says, T-90, what do you do to counter mass British archers in post-imperial once they have all their upgrades? It depends. I need map information. I need to save information. And what happens in Feudal Age, Castle Age, my friend? Like, so much of this game. Right now, Blue could be a guy showing up to my Twitch chat, and he could be saying, how do you counter Goths with Kumans once they're fully boomed? And if you saw the game, you could say... Well, you kill him earlier, you use your resources, you, you, you know, take an eco lead, all of which kind of happened, right? So, it's hard for me to answer those types of questions because what happens in the early stages of the game is the most important. 120 military against three. I thought it was possible Red could come back. I didn't actually think it was going to happen. This is low elo legends. Props to both, though. If you combine these two players into one, they're 300 ELO higher. Suddenly, their lumber camps are looking a whole lot better collectively. Suddenly, like, red and blue combined would mean that we'd have a 100 Kumin army. Because red would have actually, or blue would have produced his army. Um, and then red would have expanded his economy a bit more throughout this game. These guys are around 800 ELO... Which I still, despite these struggles in this game, I do feel like this is really impressive for the ELO. And props to these two, and let's salute them now for an entertaining game, because this has been good. Uh, I just... What's Blue going to do now? Is he... He might see how much food he has and think he can still win. But is he trying to reboom? Is he... Oh. <laughs> He's going to try the other side. <laughs> Never give up. Do the same thing on the other side. Now, Red, I would die if Red sent... How much does he have here? It's over 60 Huskarls. I would die if Red sent everything back to this side. See, it's true, right? You see how Red has very little in the middle? Sometimes, if you, if you need to take position, attacking the flanks... And making them overreact to then take the middle is the way to go. Yo, he's going to drop a castle here. What? Okay. The correct move for Red would be to send reinforcements here to defend. And send this force forward in the blue space. That would be the correct play. Um, and I think, I think he's going for that right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Doubt. Doubt castle. Uh-oh. He rang the bell, so now his eco elsewhere. That's actually interesting how the other town center bells didn't ring there. But yeah, this game, I'm fairly certain now it's just over. Wow, what a match. This had everything, man. The players knew their civilizations. The players... They knew enough about the game to make this really entertaining, but there's also some pretty big takeaways, I think, from them if they rewatch this. A small part of me really hopes that these guys knew what time I was streaming Low Elo Legends today, 
and they wanted to play a game before my stream. They're like, oh, it'll be quick, and then it ended up being a long game. So when this game ends, they'll show up. What if they're one of the regulars, and they're just like, uh-oh. <laughs> that was me. Uh-oh. Whoops. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, did you see how cool that looked? Somebody clipped that. That was beautiful. See, Viper couldn't do that. What a noob. Those husk girls looked amazing. Take out that university. That way, Blue's people will be less educated. There'll be less jobs, and then the economy will be even worse than it is now. Perfect. Uh, there's a bunch of random blue dots on this map. Like The lumber camps, again... Very interesting, but... Yeah, Blue is dead. Is Blue going to... Is he going to try and build more stables? Because he kind of has the wood for it. <laughs> I, I wonder if he's going to go for one last attack. Okay, he made a Maganel now. Rah! Rah! Yes, Blue probably should resign by higher elo standards, but also I think low elo players in red's position really enjoy defeating people, so just let it happen. Every once in a while, I would prefer that people would fight longer so I could kill them with my army. I worked all game to build up. <laughs> GG. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. Um... That was a doozy. Uh, look at the KD. Red was getting slaughtered for half of the game. Like, yes, got OP, got strong, yada, yada, yada. But earlier, the KD was 2-1 to one for blue. He had castles on each side... He had so many units, so many resources. 513 kills for blue and uh, 522 deaths. One death was to a rhino. The rest was to red scoth military. I just... We, we summed it up, didn't we? From For blue, my tips for you would be... Salam. Use your resources when you have them and go in for the kill. You were going for nice little attacks with 150 pop. You had 50 more population space to kill. And yes, if red gets to Halbert Huskarl, it's difficult. Uh, if you really want to use your resources efficiently, I think Step Planters and Champions make sense. But uh, regardless, just use your resources there. I think you're better off. I think you win the game. There's a couple other things that uh, I didn't like from Blue and I mentioned it. You remember the two castles here? The first castle was very sneaky. I appreciate it. But maybe building the other ones in safer positions, like an extra castle in the middle, might help uh, when you were trying to hold on when Red was pushing back. For Red, uh, in some ways he played this better, in other ways he played this worse than Blue. It was always going to be tough for him because Blue was on that second town center in Feudal Age to be ahead in economy. He also didn't dock. So at the very least, like I, I would say dock on a map like this and take fish. Like Blue had all the fish in the middle. And you can't, you can't give that up for free on any map that has fish. That was a big mistake. So Blue had fish, and he also had TCs. That's why his eco was so far ahead. Now that, and just Red was a little late to getting to Halberdier, but my goodness, what a game. Um, let's look at the achievements. Uh, we already saw the KD. The largest army was 135. Really only possible with Goths. Thanks for all the entertainment. And more food, wood, stone collected for Aglot, and he actually had less gold collected, which is fascinating. So you look at this, and it really tells you that Red was spending his resources and Blue was not at that one stage of the game. Now, I just want to end... Um, damn, I was going to say I want to end with this, and I actually forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> That's how bad it was. It, I had a great thought, and it left my head within two seconds. What was it going to say? I don't know. <laughs> but this is going to YouTube. That's officially episode number 11 for Low Elo Legends. And uh, if you guys would like to watch on the live stream over there on YouTube, then I'm going to be doing this every single Tuesday in my Twitch stream. And the Twitch link is below in the video description. 
Man, can we get some some T90 Lil in the chat? I guess I didn't use this meme much during this game. But uh that happens. I'm sure. There was just so many other things to pay attention to. Look at the timeline. Look at it. Look at it. Look at this. Oh, that makes me want to cry. What is that? 70% of the population here? I think he had 70% of the population that was on the map. Maybe 60, 69, something like that. He just didn't produce. And, but it also did, he allowed Red to get to the point where he got to his unit comp. So there is, in some situations, you can play it like blue and just starve your opponent out. But when you're up against the goth power, there's always a sense of urgency there. And I can see why... In some ways, Blue was probably hesitant to keep sacrificing units, but uh, sometimes you just you got to do that and produce more behind it. Quality game, low elo legends, and that was actually game number one on my live stream here today. So everyone else, it's going to be hard to match that, but we'll do more. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of people just got here. Yeah, you can watch later. That's fine. Real Vortex, hello. He says, hi, T90, first stream. Smiley face. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. 